Welcome to the Sun Parlor Coffee House Sessions. I'm Jan Hall from Folk Roots Radio. Singer-songwriter Ken Dunn's last album, The Great Unknown, from 2015, was one of my favorite albums of the year. An exquisite slice of beautifully played thoughtful folk, it was an absolute pleasure to listen to. Originally from Windsor, Ontario, Ken Dunn now makes his home on the coast of British Columbia. And joined by partner Anna Green, he's our special guest in the studio today, and he's coming up right now. Enjoy. This song is called Mermaid of Avila. And I wrote this song uh, when we were touring in California, living in, in a little town called Avila Beach. And my lovely wife, Anna, was painting mermaids on the beach. And she painted a, uh, a picture called Mermaid of Avila. So I had to write a song about this, and I dedicated it to her. Hope you enjoy it. So this next song is called Cross of Lorraine, and it's about a cross which stood for many years on Hamilton Mountain in Hamilton, Ontario, next to a chronic care hospital that was for many years at the forefront of the fight against tuberculosis, the Great White Plague. And it became the symbol of the lung association, lung associations all over the world, and also was um, featured on Christmas seals for probably half a century. And I'm going to dedicate this song to all of the patients and uh, the healthcare staff that work so hard at um, really helping to eradicate that disease and also human suffering in any form that, that, um, 
that it may take.
next song is called Stay By My Side, and it's a song that I wrote uh, about homelessness. I personally have experienced that, and I've had a chance to um, have some pretty meaningful interactions with people that have been homeless, and so I hope this, this song brings some awareness to the fact that we're all human beings, regardless of our station in life.
that's Ken Dunn and Anna Green live in the Sun Parlor Coffee House session studio today. There are special guests. Ken used to live in Windsor. He's now out in British Columbia. Great to have you guys join us. So great to be here, Jen. Yeah, thank you. And I should mention that Anna is Ken's life partner as well as some playing some beautiful piano with him. Thank you. Yeah. I want to start the conversation though by getting you to tell us a little bit about how you got into music. And then we'll get on to the love story of how you met. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I <clears throat> I think it was Ed Sullivan and the Beatles in 62 that something happened when I saw that. And uh, I wanted to be Paul McCartney or John Lennon. And I got myself a $5 guitar at the local pawn shop in Windsor. And I decided that that was what I was going to do. And uh, a few years later, I discovered Gordon Lightfoot, Neil Young, uh, Joni Mitchell, Bruce Coburn, and I decided, no, rock wasn't it. It was folk music for sure. And so that would have been in the in the late 60s, maybe, when I, I really got turned on to folk music. Did you actually start writing and recording songs in, in those days? I wasn't writing. I was writing for sure. I was writing songs ever since I could remember, even as a, a young child. I would write songs and just sing songs. So it seemed to come naturally to me, and I really loved it. It was a great way for me to... Um, uh, I don't know, express myself, I guess. And then, uh, but I didn't, uh, I didn't really start performing until I decided to leave Windsor about 69. I was 17 years old. I, I went to Toronto with, uh, with my guitar and I decided I was going to be a folk musician. And at that time there was the riverboat and Yorkville and there was coffee houses everywhere. And people were, were just, uh, there was, it was, it was a magical time. And uh, I would play in little coffee houses and busk in the new Nathan Phillips Square in Toronto and tried to make a living of it. And um, eventually uh, ended up homeless on the streets and uh, decided that, no, maybe music wasn't my thing and decided to go back to university and um, get a real job. But, um, but I did get back into music shortly thereafter and never looked back after that. And I've, I've enjoyed it ever since. Tell us a little bit about the the live show. I mean, we've actually had the opportunity to see you play in this area because you played a yeah, a, yeah. a benefit concert in Leamington. Yeah, uh, just before we uh, just the day before we recorded this uh, session, um, benefit concerts fundraisers uh, something that means a lot to you, doesn't it? Absolutely. You know, I think at this stage of my career, because I am now in a situation where I'm you know, um, older and uh, have a little bit more freedom to, to work on my music. And I'm not necessarily needing to, um, to make a, a living at the music, although it's always nice to get paid. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity for me to give back in a lot of ways. So we do a lot of benefit concerts. We've um, either individually or together have done work with uh, Amnesty, Amnesty International um, we we do an annual benefit concert for the Harry Chapin uh, Food Bank of Southwest Florida. Um, Harry Chapin, apart from being a great singer songwriter himself, was also a great in, uh, advocate uh, for hunger relief. And so we've had a great opportunity there to, to do this uh, benefit concert every every uh, year for them. And uh, doing the the bank theater concert in Leamington with the, the Gleaners was was great. Um, it's great to be able to sing songs that can connect with people emotionally, but but also at a very mm, practical level to actually, you know, provide something for, for people that need it is to me uh, just a, I feel humbled and honored to be able to, to, to be a part of that. Well, you certainly write songs that really connect with the listener. I have four or five of your songs that are permanently on my iPod. And I never tire of them because they're, they're, they're great songs. If people want to learn more about your music, how can they do that? Well, we're on uh, iTunes, of course. Uh, all the music's on iTunes. I have a website which uh, people can visit, um, Facebook page, uh, Twitter, all of that stuff, uh, social media, that kind of stuff. Um, what's the um, website? Uh, it's kendunmusic.com. Kendunmusic.com. Yeah, that's and cool. um, so that's a, a pretty good way to, to connect and you know, there's an email address on there. Email me, um, you know, connect. I love to connect with, with fans. And um, it's, a, it's wonderful to be able to connect with, with my audience. And, 
And I thank you, Jan, for, for being such a great supporter. Uh, well, Folk Roots it, Radio you know, and these Sun at the Parlor sessions are are really, really important. I think what you're doing is important work. You know, I, and I think from from my point of view, it's you were not on my radar when that album came in. And I love it when I get an album that I just go, wow. I'm the great guy. unknown. Yeah. And it say? was just lovely. <laughs> we have time for one more song. What are you going to play for us? I'm going to play a song that I wrote back in the 80s when I was living in Saskatoon. And it was recorded on an album back in the 90s, um, which never got distributed and was really kind of a low-budget affair. And I always wanted to re-record it. I thought it was a great love song. And it's a love song not so much at a personal level, but it's a love song about just loving life, loving that connection that we all share, that, that common energy. And, um, and it's couched within this uh, framework of uh, being uh, uh, sort of through the, goes through the four seasons in Saskatoon. And so I'd like to play that for you, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Ken Dunn with Anna Green in the Sun Parlor Coffee House Session Studio with Saskatoon.
time for one more song today. What are you going to play for us? That's the tune. <laughs> <laughs>